Good morning, brethren, sisters, and church of the living God. Hello. At least the folks at YouTube sent out something about how they are exercising their right to monetize. They sent out something uh, to the YouTube creators, you know, people who have content, as they say, that, yeah, we have the right to do with your stuff as we see fit. So, I give them credit at least for stating the obvious. Good for them. But, enough of that. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Daniel chapter 2. You are expected to follow me along in the scriptures and I will speak to you as though you are following along. At certain points within this uh, video, be using two sets of scriptures. Okay, but for right nor the now, we will uh, not be. I will not be. This video is a collaborated effort. Okay? Uh, a brother gave some morsels that the Lord gave him, and the Lord, the Lord kind of shaped this one way, and then it's like, no, no, that, that branched off into something else. <laughs> so, going in this direction that the Lord had would have for this morsel that a beloved brother gave um, has branched off into different directions. And this is what the Lord has given. So, this is what we're going to talk on. Praise the Lord. Like I said, this is a collaborated effort. So, you know who you are. Daniel chapter 2, we are going to be reading verses 20 on to verse 22. Uh, actually, let's read verses 19 on to verse 23. Daniel chapter 2, verses 19 on to verse 23. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. The secret. King Nebuchadnezzar wasn't telling his wise men what his dream was in order to test them. Okay? And they kept saying, show us the dream and we'll give you the interpretation. King Nebuchadnezzar, you can read the backstory on your own time. But King Nebuchadnezzar was like, ah, 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 I ain't telling you. You show me that God speaks through you by telling me what I dream." See, only God could reveal that. Okay? So, then was, that's the backstory for what we're looking at. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. Wisdom, fear of the Lord. And might are his. He changeth the times and seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Ooh. Yes. Look at that verse. He removeth kings. And setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom, fear of the Lord, unto the wise. Those that fear the Lord. Okay? One is wise who has wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Did our American President Trump have the fear of the Lord? Ha! Ha! <laughs> yeah, his Lord, probably Sosa. Yeah. Yeah. But, ha! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's continue. He giveth, uh, in verse 21, He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. <laughs> By now, 
any of you who watch anything that the Lord does through this, your servant, you ought to know about wisdom is the fear of the Lord and understanding is it apart from evil. You know, to adhere to the scriptures as how to live. Okay, let's continue. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. The light dwelleth with him. Oh, see, a lot of what we're going to be looking at is going to also kind of tie in a little bit with the video that was done previous to this one which I'll link in the description box if I can remember, okay? But now now go to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. We will read Let's read verses 28 on to verse 32 in Daniel chapter 4 touching a little bit on pride with this a little bit on pride Daniel chapter 4 verses 28 on to verse 32 now very quickly before we start reading King Nebuchadnezzar was counseled by Daniel hey why don't you kind of take yourself off of your own high horse before the Lord comes on and um, takes you off for yourself, okay? Before he knocks you off of it, okay? Humble yourself before the Lord, before he does it for you, okay? Daniel warned King Nebuchadnezzar of this before this came to pass. You read that on your own time. We've got quite a bit to go through today, okay? Hope you're ready. But Daniel chapter 4, verses 28 on to verse 32. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the king of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom, for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power? And for the honor of my majesty? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. 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 While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Who ruleth in the kingdom of men? Who rules the earth? Some of you might say, well, Satan rules this earth. Does he? Does he? Or is he rather being allowed to do things? Who truly is in control? Who is truly in control? See, God sets up one and takes down another to execute his purposes. See, a lot of these Christians in the church buildings like to quote about um, Romans chapter 13 and over there in 1 Peter about submitting to government and stuff like that. But it's, you submit unto a government that fears the Lord. Uh, and you submit on them to the punishment of evildoers. Okay? That's why. That you may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Okay? Okay, do we got that? 
But God sets people in authority. He allows people to be set up and to be brought down. Nothing happens without his say-so. God ruleth in the kingdom of men. Okay, you have to understand that. President Trump, for I'm just using my nation, <laughs> pretty good example, okay? President, President Trump was allowed to uh, rule in America for judgment upon this nation. Kamala Harris, and don't for, forget about Smoking Joe, okay? Forget about him. Kamala Harris has been established for judgment against this ungodly nation of America. Okay? God allowed it. Nothing happens without God say so. Okay? Go to Psalm 75. Here's where I'm going to be using two sets of scripture. Okay? Psalm 75. Psalm 75. We're going to read this whole psalm. Hopefully you can handle that. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. And bear up the pillars of it. I bear up the pillars of it. Silah. One second, brethren. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Psalm 75 again. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Shelah. I said unto the fools, Deal not foolishly. Fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Dealing foolishly is behaving, acting in accordance as if there is no God. Okay? And to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For... Promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is judge. He put it down one, and setteth up another. Go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter one. If you got a bookmark, put your bookmark in uh, where I, by uh, Psalm 75, okay? We're going to go back there. Don't worry. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 1 under verse 12. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of, their, of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon. For there was the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness. But the ark of God had David brought up from Kirjath Jerim to the place which David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bazil, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. This is when uh, King Solomon's heart was right with the Lord. Okay? Okay? 
Solomon, son of peace. Okay, he had peace to build the temple for the uh, name of the Lord. But then again, as we all know, King Solomon loved many strange women. The historical playa, if you will. And he married those strange women who were not of Israel. And they turned away his heart from following the Lord. And he paid a heavy price for it. Let's continue. Now get a load of this. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. God, the Father. I beg your pardon. Our Lord Jesus Christ. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. God asking of a man, What shall I give thee? But see, you've got to keep in context here that number one, Solomon was appointed by God to build the temple. Okay? Solomon, son of peace. At this point, in the very beginning, Solomon's heart was right with the Lord. It's not until he was established that when he went after strange women who were not of Israel, he, he, he went away from his kindred and married strange wives who turned away his heart after other gods. Okay? <laughs> okay? Deal with the scriptures on that if you got a problem with that. Okay? That's what happened to Solomon. Okay? But, up to this time, his heart was right with the Lord. The Lord knew what was going to happen because he happens to know everything. But, okay? In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Now, look at these three verses here. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shewed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Dust of the earth. Mm. That'll come into play a little later. Try to remember that, okay? Give me now wisdom and knowledge Ooh. that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this thy people that is so great Solomon asked for what wisdom he also asked, uh, it's also worded that he had asked for an understanding heart. Okay? Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And when you have those things, you have true what? Knowledge. And what for, and what, for what purpose did Solomon ask these things? Was he thinking of himself? that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? Go to Luke chapter 18. I want to show you something that, that was just like, whoa, <laughs> I, I found very interesting. Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. Verses 35 under verse 43. And it came to pass, as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Now this is, you know, the um, <clears throat> you know, the rich young ruler who had his eye on the world, who was of the world, who loved worldly things, loved his riches. Okay? He came to him, it's like... Uh, Good master, didn't see the Lord Jesus Christ, son of David, king of the Jews, God the Father in the flesh, okay? Because he was looking only out on the world, 
Okay? He's a blind guy. And he hearing and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. Verse 37. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Acknowledging him as king. Whereas the rich young ruler, good master. I've, I've, we've talked about that before. Okay, so let's continue. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He knew. He was blind. And Jesus stood. And Jesus stood. Hold on to that. Jesus stood. And commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the, in the flesh, okay? Saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Because this blind guy called out to his king and his God. Whereas the rich young ruler did not see his king or his God. Even though his king and God, the father, was right in front of him. See. And immediately, verse 43, come on. He received his sight. And followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto him. Put this in context now with governments. Okay? A government that is godly will glorify our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost, okay? Will glorify him. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. And here in Chronicles, verse 10, in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10, Give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy great people, this thy people, excuse me, that is so great. Mm. And verse 43 in Luke chapter 18, his sight was given him and he glorified God. How the temple that Solomon built was for God's glory, to glorify God for what the Lord had given him. Okay? And there are people out there in my nation who think that Trump was a safe man. He's a Christian, all right. But he didn't, he was, he's not a safe man of the church of the living God. He did nothing to bring honor to God, God except of his judgment against an ungodly nation. See. Now, and go to John chapter 9 now. This was... This was uh, uh, an afterthought that it's like, hey, Brad, check this out. It's like, whoa! <laughs> John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Verse 39 on to verse 41. And also this is in context with a guy who was blind, and the Lord opened his eyes. And Jesus said, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. What did Satan say to Eve? Hmm? In the Garden of Eden? 
that thine eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Oh, your eyes are open. You're illuminated, right? You weird atheists. Huh? Yeah? And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? <laughs> Can you feel that kind of edginess in that response there? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see. Therefore your sin remaineth. Ooh. Yeah. Go back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go back to 1 Chronicles now. Let's pick up in first, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, excuse me, from verse 11 on to verse 12. Okay? We saw what Solomon asked for and why he asked for it. Okay, the blind the, the blind man, so he could see, and then once the Lord gave him his sight, he went on glorifying God. Okay. Then the Pharisees was like, "Are we blind too?" <laughs> if you were blind, you'd have no sin. Now you say you can see, therefore your sin remains, because their eyes are open. You get that right. I know you do. Now, verse 11 and 12. And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and, has, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Judge. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That pertains unto what? Judging. Yeah. How do you judge? Whom I have made, whom I have made the king, over whom I have made the king, excuse me. How do you judge? By the scriptures, by the word of God, not your own feelings, but by the word of truth, you know, the sword of the spirit. And he asked for that wisdom, fear of the Lord, which will produce knowledge. And wisdom produces understanding and knowledge, doesn't it? Why? So he could judge his people. Verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have lay have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. So because his heart was tender, because he didn't seek his own, but the good of the people, okay, because God set him up as king. Because he did it God's way. Solomon was rewarded with what? Riches, wealth, honor. Such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Huh? Who gave him that? Boop. Yeah, the Lord did. Yes. Who ruleth in the kingdom of men. Now go back to Psalm 75. Come on. Verse 8. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. And the wine is red. 
it is full of mixture. And he poureth out of the same, but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Let's read verses 9 and 10. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Verse 8 again. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. And drink them. Go to Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25. Beginning at verse 15. And we will read on to verse 33. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me. Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand. And cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink. And be moved. And be mad. Because of the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup of the Lord's hand, and made all the nations to drink, unto whom the Lord had sent me, to wit, Jerusalem, beginning at Jerusalem. Start at the house of God, like it says in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. If judgment first begins at us, you know, the house of God, those who are belonging unto him are attributed unto his house not a building get it you are of the house of God you are of him of the body of Christ get it yeah yeah okay you know the church of the living God yeah yeah let's continue to wit Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation an astonishment, and hissing, and a curse, as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and remember for our instruction in righteousness, Pharaoh is likened unto a type of Satan in Egypt, likened unto a type of this world. And his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, and all the kings of the land of Ud, and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Aza, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, and Moab, and the children of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyrus, and all the kings of Zidon, and the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea, Dedan, and Tima, and Booz, and all that are in the utter, utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. Who is in control? We, you better have been following me along. I hope you were. Uh, those lists of peoples and nations and kingdoms. Who's in control? You think the Lord's up there like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> Come on, huh? Who's in control? Who is in control down here on earth? The Lord. Oh, but, but, but Satan, he, he's the, yeah, yeah. 
But you got to remember, Satan is still under the dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay, Satan is not in hell ruling upon a throne, people. Okay, while well, God is up there ruling on his throne. It's not a throne down there, throne up. No, no, no. God is in complete and utter control. And only the devil will have you to believe otherwise. Let's continue. Verse 28. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. And should ye be utterly unpunished, Pick the part. Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Seth, the Lord of hosts, a sword. You mean God is going to judge the earth, the entire earth? You don't say. <coughs> Beg your pardon, excuse me. Let's continue. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall war from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his ha habitation. He shall give a shout, as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. Seth the Lord. Oh boy. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. A great whirlwind shall be raised up. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Beg your pardon. Now, go to Hosea chapter 8. Brother, you read this the other day, didn't you? <laughs> Hosea chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 4. Hosea chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 4. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Israel has, hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. The enemy shall pursue him. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Okay, the knew it not does not mean that he was unaware. Again, God is not up there being surprised by anything. He is in complete and utter control of everything. Okay, what is this talking about? They have set up kings, but not by me. They didn't go to him. They have made princes, and I knew them not. Meaning, they weren't of him. He didn't know them through a relationship. Okay? And I knew it not. Okay? The knowing. He knows who everyone is. But knowing as to a relation. Okay? There were other kings that were raised that our Lord and the scriptures allowed to be raised up. Tyrus. 
or um, Cyrus, excuse me, Cyrus, okay, and also King Nebuchadnezzar. Both those kings, uh, Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar, I believe are up in heaven. Okay? They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold. Of their silver and their gold. Have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. Look at verse 4, or look at verse 3. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. Our instruction in righteousness. They of the world, obviously, has cast off that thing that is good. They want not to hear the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. What does it say? The enemy shall pursue him. Who is our enemy? Satan. And what is the vehicle that Satan is using? Christianity, as hell as led by Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order. So, if one casts off that which is good, and there is none good but one, and that is God. Uh -huh, you see that? The enemy shall pursue him. Hmm. Isn't that interesting, huh? Go to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. You know, how often do you... How often do you say to yourself when something happens that is against your plans, oh, the Lord's will be done? Yeah. You say that. But do you really get the gravity of it? Do you sometimes even know, and this is a loving rebuke to you, Church of the Living God, you know that God is in control. But do you need to be reminded of that sometimes? You say you know that God is in control. Then why do some of you live foolishly? Satan really that powerful? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, he's far more powerful than us. Even Michael himself, you know, the archangel Michael, wouldn't dare bring a railing accusation against Satan, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke thee. Okay? Like it says in Zechariah. Okay? And in, uh, what is that, in Jude, right? The Lord rebuked thee. But, is Satan ruling on a throne from hell, right? No, no. He's subservient unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Check this out. Exodus chapter 33, verses 11 on to verse 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me now thy way. Remember what Solomon said so he could, you know, uh, come in, go, come out, among this thy great people, so he could judge righteously. Okay? Verse 
Show me now thy way. Not his way. Not your own way. But whose way? Thy way. How shall a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Yeah, Psalm 119, Beth. Yeah, yeah. Who's really in control? You, okay, you, you, we say that, right? Are we truly living like it is so? I, am I? Are you? That I may know thee, that I may, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider this, consider that this nation is thy people. Clearly, I'm but talking about Israel, okay? But look at that verse. Moses going to the Lord. Show me thy way that I may lead these people according to how you would have me to. And you, some of you, my countrymen, you honestly think that Trump was doing that? And Kamala Harris... You think she's doing that? She's a Jesuit. She works for the Jesuit order. The Jesuits. The enemy of all. Satan's army. The army for his church, Roman Catholicism. Hello? McFly? Okay? See, godly government seeks the Lord. But... Ungodly governments seek the little G God of this world. And he has been allowed to do so and be such for judgment against ungodly nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. I don't think there's obviously one nation on this earth that is a godly nation. What about you? If you think so, I, I, I kind of have to tell you, I think you're a little blind. Let's continue. And he said, verse 14, now check this out. And he said, my presence shall go with thee. And I will give thee rest. Now pay attention here from verse 14 on to verse 19. Pay attention. Okay? Pay attention. Note specifically the I wills. Note these from verse, okay? From right here, verse 11 on to verse 19. Note the I wills. I will, and he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, this is Moses, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. If God is not involved with the government, then an enemy shall pursue them. And who is that enemy? And they will be given on to that enemy for judgment. <clears throat> for wherein shall it be for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight is it not in that thou goest with us so shall we be separated I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth Separation. Holiness. Really? Hmm. Isn't that, isn't that something? And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, 
show me thy glory. Pretty bold of Moses, wouldn't you say? Show me thy glory. Amen. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will shew mercy on whom I will shew, shew mercy. Six times. Six is the number of man, isn't it? So, look at verse 19. From, from where we started, okay? From verse, uh, where was that? Verse 14, if I said 11, please forgive me. From verse 14 on to verse 19 there, six specific I wills from our Lord. Six of them. Six is the number of man. And looking at verse 19, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. Who's in control? You think you're in control of your own life? Yeah, even you being lost, you're not in control of your own life. No, there is one who rules over you. Ultimately, of course, the, the Lord is going to rule over you. And he is ruling over you by allowing the enemy to pursue you. Again, who can even truly begin to fathom the all of God? Hmm? Some of you might be thinking of, well, why hasn't Brad used a certain word that begins with an S? That's a Calvinistic word, so I'm trying to avoid it, okay? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Don't you? Yeah. But now, go to Romans chapter 9. And here are where these um, <laughs> these hyper dip stick sensationalists like to uh, try to tie this in. It's like, oh, it's just for the Jews. Those guys are a heretic, crazy, wingnut, baddie, lost devils. Stay away from those types, okay? But just to show you this, go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Verse uh, 15 and 16. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Oh, beg your pardon. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that sheweth mercy. God who sheweth mercy. See, that's, that's why when, it, as pertaining unto you being saved, God looks upon your heart, okay? If your heart is broken and contrite and you fear the Lord, okay? Okay? According to the scriptures, if you come to him on his terms and in that brokenness, contrition, fear, you call out for his mercy. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not the actual calling, but that calling comes from a broken and contrite heart. Okay? Just because you have called out to the Lord 27 times, and he hath not saved you, it is not that he is obligated to save you merely because you call. He is not obligated to save you merely because you believe. It is the heart. Okay? It is the heart. Yeah, and God knows your heart. Yeah. That is what? Deceitful. 
and desperately wicked. See, that's why you need to be broken of your pride and self-righteousness, see. Okay, do you get that? Okay, and in brokenness of your self-righteousness, contrition, sorrow, not just for what you are, but for what you have done to the one who loved you, past tense, and gave, past tense, himself for you because of what you did. Fear of the Lord. See, it's the issue of the heart. And when your heart has been broken and contrite and you have the fear of the Lord, you're going to call upon him. And when he sees that condition of the heart and brokenness and contrition, submission unto him. Whoso, what does it say? What does it say? Verse 13 in Romans chapter 10. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. But in verse 9, believe in thine heart. The confession comes from a broken heart, dear friends. See, there are those out there who think that, well, there are those out there who say that just because you believe, that means that the Lord is obligated to save you. And then those guys come around and say to us who preach about brokenness, contrition, the fear of the Lord, they say, well, you're saying that it's in your call. You call, you call from a broken heart. You believe from a broken heart. See, you, you devils don't have a broken heart. You're still in your pride. You're still in your self-righteousness. Hence, an enemy pursues you. And with many of you has overtaken you. You belong to him. Don't you? (laughs) Yeah. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. No, with the time's coming, brethren. <laughs> brethren, some of y'all need to take your head out from betwixt your buttocks. I love you. Like yesterday, today's the 25th. Okay, yesterday. Um, my dear brother, my dear friend, the Lord clearly used our brother, our friend yesterday out for for his own glory. You know, totally turned uh, turned upside down his schedule to send him somewhere for his glory. Yesterday, my wife and I doing the work of the Lord. You know? See, in these moments right now, brethren, we have to be very mindful of these things. Time is getting really short, okay? And all the distractions that the devils will send at you to get you away from what you ought to be focused on. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 34 and verse 41. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? Don't look at me. Look at that verse 35. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. 
The Lord shall judge his people. The Lord shall judge his people. Remember that. And repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted? Where are all your scholars? Where are your scientists? Huh? Where are all your little Jesuit coadjutor buddies going to be at the, in the day when the Lord himself come calling? Tough guy. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. <laughs> uh, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See, if you are not saved of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, you have no hope. You have no hope. What are you hoping for? The Jesuit jab? Hmm? What, what, you think the Sosa or Francis is going to be your, uh, yeah, yeah. You have no hope if you ain't saved. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices. See, you bow down to this world, sure, you can eat the fat of their sacrifices. And drank the wine of their drink offerings. Uh-huh. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. When the Lord comes calling, when the Lord comes calling, do you, you think anything out there is going to protect you? And some of you out there think, oh, wow. Wow. Now, and also, too, you got to remember, the, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. They're one and the same. One God comprised of a spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, and body, the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, one God, okay? And uh, for those of you who are taught, who are, who have been taught by the Jesuits that, you know, Jesus is a God of love, and yes, he is, and you go to the red words. If you have red words in your scriptures, uh, read Revelation chapter 2 and 3, okay? Those are red words in some scriptures, not in Cambridge like I have, but uh, read those red words, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a different Jesus, right? He came as the lamb. And he will soon be the lion. Verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. I make alive. I wound. And I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You have no hope if you ain't saved. Why would you want to go against the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost? Why would you want to go against Him? Because you're too proud of yourself, right? You love, you love what Satan gives you, don't you? For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet, W-H-E-T, sharpening stone kind of thing. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Get the fingers, thank you. <laughs> fingers work with me. Amos chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. One second, brethren. 
Sorry about that, brethren. There's no gray area in this place. Close the window, it gets stuffy in here, so beg your pardon. Amos chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Excuse me, nothing. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? God allows evil to happen for his purposes, for judgment, for correction, to bring someone on to himself, whatever it is, okay? Satan will allow the devil and his angels to do things, okay? Especially onto the world. But when it comes to those who are of his own, that's a different story. We'll, we'll get to that, okay? Okay? We have to remember who is really in control. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken. Who can but prophesy? Sting about the lion. Sting about the lion. Go to Jeremiah 25. Huh? Jeremiah 25. Verses 34 on to verse 38. See how we did that? Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 34 on to verse 38. You saw that, right? <coughs> Howl, ye shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions are accomplished, and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. And the shepherd shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. Think about the people who are leading a lot of these so-called Christians today from the church buildings. And where are they leading them on to? Straight to the door of the Vatican. And the people love to have it so, for the most part. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and the howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord hath spoiled their pasture. And the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He hath forsaken his covert as the lion. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. He hath forsaken his covert as the lion. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of the, his fierce anger. You know, out of uh, when Samson rends that uh, tiger or that lion and he takes sweetness out of the um, uh, honey out of there, sweetness out of the devourer or sweetness out of the eater or whatnot. Yeah. But this thing about the lion, um, go to Revelation chapter 5. See, when the Lord came here first, 
God will provide himself a lamb. God the Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? He was manifest to take away the sin of the world, to be the sacrificial lamb. But when he come back, when he comes back, okay? Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the king of Israel, who would that be? You don't say, you don't say. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But see, also in Jeremiah chapter 25, which I closed, I took my fingers out there. Jeremiah chapter 25. It, it seems as if another is there. He hath forsaken his cover as the lion, for their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger his fierce anger and the oppressor who is this oppressor we know who that we know the answer to that but let's refresh ourselves of course go to Isaiah chapter 14 Isaiah chapter 14 Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart. Now remember the six specific I wills that we saw in Exodus from verse 14 on to verse 19? Six is the number of man. God will be gracious unto whom he will be gracious. He will have mercy on Man, six is the number of man. For thou, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pits. Five I will. And you all know this. This is Satan. I will be like the Most High. And an enemy pursueth them. Hmm. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter. Chapter 5. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? Jesus Christ is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Alright? But check this out. Remember, Satan wants to be like the Most High. A copycat. An imitator. Okay? A counterfeit. You know, all the Bibles. Trying to counterfeit and copy and replace the Scriptures. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 on to verse 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves. Allow the breaking to happen, that you may be broken and contrite. Fear the Lord and come to him. And in brokenness, fear and contrition, Call upon him that he may save you. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That's what it says. Do you believe it? You say you do, but do you? Be sober. In my state of mind. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as 
a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, as a roaring lion. Lion of the tribe of Judah, and right here it says that your our adversary, uh, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Oh, kind of like an imitation, huh? Seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast in your own power, saying, I rebuke you. Now, who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hmm. Hmm. Most of you already know this, obviously, but it does not hurt to refresh yourselves, especially in light of what's coming. You know, the, uh, yesterday we went to the store. It was very different. It used to be that being in stores were intense because not wearing a <laughs> and being around everyone else, it was getting pretty intense. But now, yesterday, which was the 24th, when we were walking around in the store, there were other people that didn't have a face mask on. And my wife and I were kind of like, wow. Because... If they're not wearing a face mask now, what does that mean? You think about that. But 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ, apostles of Christ, excuse me, and no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing of his, if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, like I said to a brother, we immediately... When we see that, we immediately just limit that to the realm of religion, don't we? Don't we? It's a little bit deeper than that. Perfect example, Tony Robbins, okay, and his Jesuitical NLP mind control techniques that he uses, okay? He's a minister of righteousness, okay? Joel Osteen, a Luciferian, okay, whose religion is the law of attraction, okay. I, I, it, it, I understand, you know, that these are the last days and people are lover, lovers of themselves, but I don't know how anyone, man or woman or child, with two cents half of a brain would ever believe that Joel Osteen is a saved man. I, but see, we tend to think only in the, the realm of religion with verse 15, don't we? It's a little bit deeper than that. Hmm? These, what was it, uh, men walking their own way movement? Ministers of righteousness? Men walk their own way, whatever that was. I looked a little into that. <laughs> Crazy. Okay? It's not just relegated to religion. Keep that in mind, brethren. Keep that in mind. Your eyes have to be a little bit more broad out there when looking at what is there present in context to the scripture. And realize, yes, this is actually happening. Okay. Okay. But now, as an angel, what does it say? 
And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verses 5 on to verse 7. Okay? Verses 5 on to verse 7. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And hold your place there, and go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. And again, Matthew 4, verses 8 and 9. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Luke chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now, we often take into account that, well, Jesus never rebukes the devil for saying what he said. For that is delivered unto me. An enemy will pursue them. Um... Satan being allowed to do what he is doing today is God's judgment on this world for rejecting him. Satan is going to hell. Satan's final end is the great white throne of judgment uh, or the great, uh, the excuse me, the lake of fire, okay, where he's going to burn forever and ever and ever, whoop, eternity to infinity and beyond, okay? He's going to burn forever. Him, the false prophet, him, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Okay? The Trinity. Okay? He's going to burn forever in the lake of fire. That's where he's heading. He is not sitting on a throne ruling in hell, dear people. Okay? We, we ought to know this. Okay? Okay? But it's often said that for, the, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Really? He never rebuked him, huh? Never said, oh, that's not true. Well, look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only. Shalt thou serve? And when you go to Luke chapter 4, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That's very, very interesting, isn't it? Satan, when it comes to, in, 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 you know, as correlating on to the church of the living God, Satan cannot touch you, those of you who are saved, unless the Lord gives him permission to do so. But those of the world that are not his, Satan doesn't need, or God, or yeah, Satan doesn't need God's permission to afflict those who do not belong to the Lord. But Satan is not right now being allowed to completely rule and reign. Why is that? Why is that? But touching on what the devil said here, 
And uh, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. You know, when was Satan actually given anything? He's being allowed to. He's being allowed to for judgment. Okay? Okay? Genesis chapter 3, verses 14, unto the close of the chapter. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, the serpent is Satan, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, slithering, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. You remember earlier in this video I said to you about the dust thing? Let's keep reading, shall we? And I will put, here's the very first prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, okay? This is the very first prophecy given in scripture about it, okay? I have actually a few videos proving this to you, okay? The Revelation video and another one, I can't remember offhand, okay? But, and I will put enmity between thee, Satan, and the woman, Israel, and between thy seed, Roman Catholicism, and her seed, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? The King of Israel, Son of David, Church of the Living God, you know, his chosen people. Okay? Okay? And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It shall bruise thy head. Bruise his head. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to bruise the head of who? Satan. Okay? His church, Roman Catholicism, okay? It shall bruise thy head, Lord Jesus Christ will bruise his head, and thou shalt bruise his, the Lord Jesus Christ's heel, from stomping on him, okay? And if you've seen some of these depictions of the Queen of Heaven, uh, you know, Diana of the Ephesians, uh, the Roman Catholic Mary, if you've ever seen some of them, she's standing on a serpent, because, uh, I forget, there are, I think there's only one or two Bibles out there that take where it says his heel and puts her heel. I think one is actually the Dewey Reims, and there's another one, the, uh, both Catholic translations, uh, openly Catholic translations. I think the other one is the Good Word translation or whatever that takes his and puts hers in there. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Man is the head of woman. Because woman came out of man. Of man is what woman means. Okay? And on the Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Thorns and thistles, and the earth is cursed, and Satan is to what? Uh, upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And the earth is cursed. And it brings forth thorns and thistles. Hmm. Kind of like the cares of this world sounds like a little bit to me. What about you, huh? Let's continue. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground.
For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art. And unto dust shalt thou return. Mm. Wow. Huh? Now, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Verse 14. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, you know what I said to verse 24? Let's keep it at verse 19 there in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Okay? For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And the serpent is to eat dust all the days of his life. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh yeah. You knew that, didn't you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verses one on the verse four. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Meaning, walking according to the scriptures. Walking your life according, in accordance with this book. Your daily testimony that you live outside there. Not just when the camera's on you. Or when you're amongst whomever. Pick your part. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the Light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Hmm. And upon his belly he shall go and eat dust all the days of his life. From dust we came on, to dust we will return. You, you know where we're going with this, don't you? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 7 on to verse 12. I already have covered this in quite a bit <laughs> before, but verses 7 on to verse 12 in Second Corinthians and Second Thessalonians chapter 2. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The church of the living God, the body of Christ, the ambassadors of our Lord Jesus Christ, those of us who are saved, born again, converted. Church of the living God. Okay? God, through his body, is letting, hindering. Okay? Satan has not been allowed to take full reign of this earth yet. Why? Because the church of the living God is still here. Okay? Okay? Now, until he, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way, the redemption of the purchased possession. And then, after the, after the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. His second coming. Going to destroy the son of perdition. That man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? 
But hold your place here. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Okay? I don't know. I don't think it's that the Lord didn't rebuke him. It's just the Lord, it's like, remember your place. Because Satan said that to God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. Okay? And he said that because, because of the flesh, because of the actual physical body, okay, the flesh, that would, what, get tired that would dehydrate, that could be injured, that would sweat, that would have pimples, that would have body odor, okay? Satan appealed on to the flesh. And you read cha uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3, about God's own testimony of flesh, which onto Satan, i.e. the Catholic, flesh is everything, isn't it? buddy boy. Right. Yeah. Flesh is everything to you Catholics. Because it is unto the devil. Because the devil is to eat what? Dust! All the days of his life. And from dust we came and unto dust we will return. Hello? Okay? But Revelation chapter 6 verse 1. And I saw when the lamb the lamb Who's the Lamb? Okay? The Lamb is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The Church of the Living God is taken out in Revelation chapter 4. Okay? And in Revelation chapter 5, he is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah, but he has not come back yet at his second coming yet, in accordance with the book of Revelation. The son of, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the spirit of Antichrist, which is already working today, okay? And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, a singular crown, and he had a bow. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. That, dear friends, is the son of perdition, that man of sin, the abomination that maketh desolate, the beast, inaccurate, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Show me the Antichrist in the scriptures. In the scriptures, the King James Version, of course. You get back to me when you find that, okay? But, okay, so the lamb opens the first seal and hence goes the son of perdition. Verse 9 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Before we continue, I know, we know, that it's hurting a lot of you when the Lord uses you as a witness, whether in speaking or by just in how you live in accordance to the scriptures. Um, I know it's hurting you, a lot of you, because of your family, your friends, right? You have to come to that and understand what the scripture says, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved but rather want what Satan offers them. Hence, God's judgment. Okay? Lord said, get behind me, Satan. Okay? Or get thee hence, Satan. It's like, who do you think you're talking to? See, Satan was attacking the flesh. Okay? 
Because he knows that the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, read Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, about what God says about flesh. Okay? And how he said the flesh profiteth nothing. But see, Satan elevates flesh. Look at, look at, look, look on one TV. Look at what's going out, on outside there. Huh? You have to remember, brethren. And with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And look outside your door. Look outside your window. I rest my case. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And, 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 and what was that? What was that in? What was that in? Oh, Hosea, that we looked at, or was that in Amos? What was that in? I think it was Hosea. Hosea chapter eight. Hosea chapter eight. Go back there, please. Hosea chapter eight. Verse three. Hosea 8, verse 3. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. Our instruction in righteousness. The world has cast off that which is good. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In 2 Timothy, chapter 2, Ooh, let's, let's begin at verse 24 on to verse 26 in 2 Timothy, chapter 2. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Uh, patient. Yeah. Yeah. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance, to the acknowledging, repentance and acknowledging, there's a totally different, never mind, never mind. Will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Taken captive by him at his own will. All this is given unto me, and whomsoever I will, I give it to. Hmm. Job chapter 1. Job. Job chapter 1. Okay? Don't worry, we're not going to read the whole book of uh, chapters 1 and 2 in Job. We should, but we will not. Okay? All right, Job chapter 1, verses 8, on to verse 12. Let's read verses 6, on to verse 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going, look at that, to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. 
wandering, slithering. Her ways are always movable, that thou canst not know them. But it says walking, yes. Yes. Yes, but remember, he was cursed to eat dust all the days of his life. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered Job, my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, and a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and issueth evil? <laughs> I, I hope I could only pray that one of you of the Church of the Living God at the judgment seat of Christ can hear such an, a thing from the Lord. That's the Lord saying that about Job. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Look at this verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But, you know, uh, thorns and uh, thistles that spring up and choke the word that they become unfruitful or a little um, persecution because of the word's sake. They are offended. Huh? But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Touch all that he has. The things that I give him, right? Right. No. No. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. The teaching is, you have the church of the living God for us today, for our instruction and in righteousness, okay? Anything you have is from the Lord. You go outside of our Lord's will to get something that he don't want you to have. You're messing around with the devil. Stop it. That's why we are to seek him in all things. And not be part of this world. See? Separation. Okay? Okay? So what the Lord has given you as the church of the living God, he's keeping it by his grace. Because the Lord says, okay, go ahead. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You're saved by the church of the living God. Satan cannot afflict you unless the Lord give him permission. And if the Lord give him permission, you need to seek him and ask why. Or do you know why? I just don't want to get into the scriptures, huh? And of course, of course, the one, two, three, four, four things that happened right away. And Job shaves his head and, and he says, Naked, uh, verse 21, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you going to be able to do that when you lose everything? If you lose everything? When I lose everything? If I lose everything? And then, chapter 2. Verses 3. On to verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and issueth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without, a, without cause? Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand. But save his life. Don't kill him. Whew. 
Satan needs God's permission to attack you, church of the living God. And if you know for certain that Satan is, find out, try to find out why. Because when you read the book of Job, a clear why was not really given to Job. But uh, who are you to question me, boy? Okay? But there again, if the devil is being allowed to, to, to attack you, church of the living God, it's for his glory, not yours. Maybe it's because you're in sin, or maybe he wants to refine you. Who knows? But also, too, now, go to Acts chapter... No, 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 no. Yeah, go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verses 15 on to verse 17. The sons of Sceva, who are fake, call, uh, trying to, uh, the saying, we adjure thee, where is that say that? Um, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth, trying to take the name of the Lord without being saved. Okay? Verse 15, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are ye? Who weren't they? They weren't of the church of the living God. And this spirit, this evil spirit, um, was calling, it's like, you're trying to call on the name of the Lord to get me out when you belong to our father, the devil, anyway. You're of, you're, we're basically the same. And you're trying, no, no, see. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. When you allow when you when you give everything over onto the devil when you take what he has to offer you when you think his ways are better than the Lord's he's going to fly upon you he's going to leap upon you and at the end he's going to leave you naked and wounded And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at, at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified because the fake was ousted by the fake. <laughs> the, the, the fake were ousted by uh, evil spirit while the fake was trying to pretend that they were of the church of the living God. <laughs> And on that, uh, go to Revelation chapter 3. About the naked and uh, wounded and naked. Revelation chapter 3. Verses 14 on to verse 22. And on to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Vomit. Make the Lord puke. Oh boy. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, 
and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. The Lord, open your eyes. Not falling for what the devil did. In disobedience, then your eyes will be open. No, obey, and the Lord will open your eyes. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now see, the evil spirit in Acts chapter 19 did what? Leapt on them, and they ran out wounded. And they were of their, they, the sons of Sceva, they were unsaved. They were of the world. They were fake. And they were of the world, okay? And the little G got of this world is Satan. And those of the world were trying to cast out an evil spirit himself. Uh, was it the pot calling the kettle black? But see, what our Lord says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. God does what? Rebukes and chastens those whom he loves. Who's love? Who has God's love in a present tense? The lost world God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense. Loves, you look in the uh, uh, book of the Song of Solomon, okay? Uh, the love of Christ unto his bride, the church of the living God, okay? God's love, present tense, is for you of the church of the living God. If you are saved and born again, converted. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. And will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay? Now, also, also, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 1 under verse 11. you got to remember, the book of Hebrews is written for who? The Hebrews. For the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and verse 11. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Jesus Christ never sinned. He can't sin. He is God. He is perfect. He is of pure eyes. Okay? He cannot behold the things that are filthy. Okay? He sees them. Yes. But Jesus Christ never sinned. Okay? So where it says contradiction of sinners against himself, he wasn't a sinner. Never. He couldn't sin. He can't sin. God can't sin. God always does what is right. Even though you think it's wrong sometimes. Hi! Ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. That's not self-flagellation like the Catholics do. Crazy. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh, speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the, of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, 
he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. See, it's not a belief or a prayer that makes it an obligation on the Lord's part to save you. No. You have to come to him on his terms. And his terms are broken and contrite, dear friend. You can try to get away from that all you want. For a lot of you, before it's too late, you'll realize. Unless you're a Jesuit coadjutor meant there to deceive and try to bring as many people to hell with you as you can, have fun the way you're going. You deserve it. <clears throat> Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye without, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our prophet, that we might be partakers of his holiness. See, whom he loveth, he rebuketh and chasteneth. Satan rebuking his own just because he wants to. Not for anyone's prophet except his own, meaning that he wants to be God. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous. <laughs> no, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Peaceable fruit of righteousness. Whose righteousness? How many of you have gone through some severe chastening? And afterwards, that shalom, peaceable fruit of righteousness. Who is in control? So too, you got to remember, John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We, we, we looked at why our Lord chastens for our profit that we may be partakers of his righteousness. Okay? And plus, not to mention that today in this dispensation we are his ambassadors, you know, ministers of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation. Okay? How you serve the Lord reflects the Lord. And that works both ways. You're lost. How you serve your God of the little G God of this world shows, uh, reflects your little G God, Satan. A lot of you are doing a good job at that, aren't you, you devils? Yeah. John chapter 15, verses 19 on to verse 21. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I sent unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. 
Yeah, and you saw in Acts chapter 19 the love that the devil gives to his own. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 44 on to verse 45. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. And remember, let us not forget, Matthew chapter 16. Okay? Matthew chapter 16. Again, another proof for you that that which is of the world is of flesh, and Satan is all about the flesh. Okay? Matthew chapter 16. When Peter rebuked the Lord about going up to Jerusalem and dying in accordance with the scripture. Verse 23, But he, Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. He'll be on his belly eating dust all the days of his life. And man is dust. From dust we came, unto dust we shall return. He said, all this has been delivered unto me. And whosoever I will, I give it. And Jesus like, man, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> You're out of line. You're out of line. Get thee hence, get behind me. Get out of my way. He actually did rebuke the devil. Just not in the way that we would think. Because yes, Satan is allowed to do what he will. But he has not been allowed to have free reign yet because we, the Church of the Living God, are still here. Unto his own, <laughs> yeah, onto his own, Satan shows a lot of love onto his own. Yeah. Yeah. But those who are of the church of the living God, God's chastening, God's correction, this is love for those who are his. Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We will be reading verses 7 on to verse 30. You thought I forgot about it, didn't you? Oh no. John chapter 10, verses 7 on to verse 30. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. Very similar to what we saw in Acts chapter 19, isn't it? I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Right there, verse 16, talking about this current dispensation. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath the devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, oy vey, <laughs> I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Watch this. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Are you ready? Verse 30. I and my Father are one. One God. Jesus Christ is the Father. Spirit, soul, and body. He's got the whole world in his hands. Doesn't he? Doesn't he? Ooh, ooh. Who really is in control? Who's really controlling the scene? Who is it? It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Now if you're lost, you're fake, you're a devil, whatever. You devils who have made your choice and have been deciding to follow your God, Satan, um, you're going to get what you deserve. But those of you for whom there is still hope, take great consideration of these things that we've looked at today. God is in control. And nothing happens by accident. Again, if you believe in coincidences, there's something wrong with your thinking. Okay? Nothing just ever happens. Take into consideration what we have looked at today. And for you, my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, be encouraged and remember, God says what he means, means what he says. And Yes, he is in control. 
Let us not forget that. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you on to the brother who um, shared this morsel uh, with me. Uh, and praise be to the Lord that he did with it as he saw fit. Like I said, took it in several different directions until it landed on this. <laughs> but that going in different directions uh, gave birth to several other things which, which are coming. So, Thank you again, brethren, sisters. Church of the Living God, thank you for all that you have done, for your prayers, for everything you have given. We, my wife and I, n none of this would be possible if it wasn't for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through you, the Church of the Living God. Thank you. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Okay? Pray for one another. Because the, uh, the times that are coming, oh boy. So, like I said, that's going to be it for this video. I love you. I'm going to upload this. It's uh, now 1.36 p.m. my time. It's going to take a couple of hours for this to upload, so. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, don't neglect to play uh, to pray for one another. Okay, and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye.